with me. Gracious and loving God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable unto you, my God, my, my strength, and my redeemer. Amen. So, this summer we're exploring some of the lesser known characters in the Bible. You know, they all had an impact on the major characters, the people we know. The ones we call heroes. Now, last week we heard about Mordecai, who appears in the book of Esther. And today I want to talk about some folks who are only mentioned sort of as a sideline, as a, as a little afterthought. Noah's sons, Ham and Japheth and Shem. And I have to tell you that I have practiced many times not to say Shem. <laughs> He's one of the three brothers, not the three stooges. <laughs> And if I say that, just ignore it, okay? <laughs> now, after the ark landed on the top of the mountain and the, and the family began to settle the land, Noah planted a vineyard, which kind of makes sense. And in due time, the grapes ripened and Noah made some wine, which is what you do, right? Now, he apparently over-imbibed, and he passed out. Now his son Ham found him in his tent, unconscious <laughs> and in a state of undress. So he went and told his brothers. And Japheth and Shem carefully covered their father without looking at him. Now. Usually, this story is used to talk about respecting one's elders. And sometimes it's, it's used to talk about privacy and the sin at looking at another person who is unclothed. You know, I'm a little concerned that it's rarely used to discuss the problem of using alcohol inappropriately. <laughs> In any case, in any case, Ham and his heirs, through all generations, were punished. And his brothers and their heirs, through all generations, were rewarded. Now here's the question. Was Ham's behavior inappropriate? Was it? You know, if you accidentally walked in on a friend or a parent, who had over-imbibed, what would you do? You couldn't avoid seeing. You could cover him up and discuss it with others, as Ham seems to have done. You know, maybe, maybe that's the sin. It's not seeing his father. Maybe the sin is giggling about it behind his back. You know, a more appropriate response might be, to cover him up and then just talk, not talk about it. Or, if it's a common occurrence, to cover him up and then, you know, in today's words, organize an intervention. <laughs> or maybe, or maybe it's, it's about our weird love-hate relationship with nudity and sexuality. We are tantalized. We fantasize, we ogle. And then we talk about sex as a holy thing that should be reserved for the one we love. It really is this love-hate relationship with sexuality. And I wonder if that's why we have such a pushback, um, pushback against same gender relationships while, while at the same time, the movies show those relationships and the ones, the ones that fairly explicitly feature women seem to sell very well. <laughs> and apparently not to women. So that's interesting. Uh, maybe, maybe this story though, is about respect. 
respect for one's parents, <coughs> even when the parents don't really deserve that respect. Respect when they don't deserve it. You know, in ancient times, the patriarch of the clan, Noah in this case, because like Noah was the oldest person on earth at this time, the patriarch was to be honored and respected and even obeyed without question. And you know what? That makes sense. It makes sense when the survival of the clan may well depend on responding to orders very quickly. You know, if the tribe is under attack, you know, somebody has to say, uh, you go this way and you go that way. I'm not sure that it makes as much sense in today's world. You know, should we honor without question a person who gets drunk and abuses his or her children? What about somebody who gambles the family's money away? You know, instant obedience is seldom as important in our society today as it was in ancient times. But then again, you know, maybe this story is about keeping confidences. You know, how often do we share, share something with a friend? You know, assuming that it's just between the two of us. Just between the two of us. And sometimes we even say that. It's just, just between the two of us. Let me tell you about this. Right? <clears throat> And then we hear that the whole church has all of the details. <laughs> because that person shared it in confidence, who shared it in confidence, who shared it in confidence, right? <laughs> Unless keeping that confidence would hurt someone, we need to honor the trust that would hurt someone. I need to tell you in confidence that I am going to you know, go shoot my neighbor. Well, I think maybe you could probably not keep that confidence, right? And finally, you know, I wonder a little bit, well, maybe a lot, about Ham's heirs being punished forever through all generations. They became the Canaanites. And you know, that in the, in the story of Moses, and we came across the desert, and then they slew all the Canaanites? Or at least the Canaanites were expelled by Joshua several hundred years later, but hmm. You know, it's a grudge. That's a grudge. 700 years? That's a big grudge. And sometimes we do that. We carry grudges. You know, the things we suffer from siblings or, or other youngsters still come back to us today. I'm not going to my high school reunion because so-and-so said something in science class in my sophomore year. Right? We do that. We continue or we think we continue to punish people for things they did years and years ago. And, and you know, when we do that, they probably have forgotten it and they don't even know they're being punished. What good is that? What good is that? So, so when we carry that grudge, what does it do? It makes us unhappy. It makes us feel kind of holy, better than them. But it makes us unhappy. But this little, this little story, this little couple of verses of, from the book of Genesis, this little bit about Noah's family, gives us some little things to think about, some ideas that we can hold in our minds, some things to mull over. 
a little story about Noah's misuse of alcohol. Um, Noah himself didn't seem to uh, suffer any undue effects. So maybe this is a one-time thing. Oh, new wine. Never had that before. Of course, yeah, I guess he stayed pretty healthy because he lived another 350 years. You know, maybe what we should do, maybe what we should do is change our behaviors based upon a little bit of learning. Some of the things, maybe in this scripture, but in other scriptures, change our behaviors just a little bit. And then, you know, it may be helpful in case we live another 350 years. What would you do differently today if you knew you were gonna live 350 more years? Think about it, think about it. Amen.